Today we're going to have a discussion about Queen Elizabeth and sculpture art. We talk about painting all the time. Let's talk about 3D images. Let's get started. And please leave a thumbs up and subscribe because I'm sure there are more topics that we could talk about. Let's get started. Joe McKenzie here. We have been reviewing Portrait Artist of the Year and Landscape Artist of the Year. And what I want to talk about today is different. What I want to talk today is about a sculpture that was unveiled, uh, was revealed um, around the beginning of September 2024. It's, it's an interesting sculpture of Queen Elizabeth II. And royal art has kind of a history of being pretty controversial. But I want to show you the art and ha let please let me know what you think of it because we've we've watched a lot of representational art come come across in Portrait Artist of the Year, but this is sculpture. Now this particular sculpture is of Queen Elizabeth II. It is in North Ireland at Antrim Castle Gardens. It was revealed in early September, uh, twenty twenty four. So not very long ago. It's a bronze statue of the queen next to Prince Philip with two corgis. And I guess the statue of Prince Philip was there already. So this would have been added after, I mean, obviously after their death. Maybe his was installed after uh, his death as well. Um, it's in a garden setting. And I think that's important because when I look at some other uh, royal sculpture, and of course, setting matters. You know, an informal setting of a garden doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have all of your robes and your crown and all that. Uh, the other thing to consider here is how weird is it to have a bronze lifetime, lifetime statue of yourself? I mean, it's just weird. <laughs> and, you know, um, I think about, I think about, well, myself, well, maybe I'm, a, I'm slightly, well, I'm younger than Queen Elizabeth II, of course, but um, when I think about older people, because it, it sort of shows her in her latter years, her, her latter years being probably, you know, in her 80s and 90s. And it's, it's just so strange. Think of some of the older people in your life. Think about your gra grandparents, your great grandparents, and think about how weird it would be to have a bronze of them. I already think it's weird to have uh, Madame Toussaint, you know, the wax museum thing, where the, it looks exactly like the people, but it also looks like they've been, um, this is not a word, I don't think, but it's like they've been taxidermed. You know, there's, there's stuff, there's no life in them. This is different, though, because it's, you know, there's no color to it. It's all about form. And l let me just read you what the, you know, it was commissioned by that, um, by that garden, by the society, Antrim Castle Garden Society. And this is what they had to say about the statue. They're thrilled with it, is what they had to say. But when you see the image, see if this lines up with what you think. It says, the image shows majest majesty, dignified pose. Okay, let me try again. It says, it shows her majesty in a dignified pose, reflecting steadfastness, grace, and lifelong dedication to service. And you can find the statue at Antrim, Newton, Abbey, Borough, Council. Anyway, <laughs> of course the queen is known for those things, you know, steadfast grace, lifelong dedication to service. You could say that about any one of her statues. But this one in particular, I don't know how you feel about it, but I have some, because we've talked about the Prince Philip um, portrait that was revealed last spring, and that perhaps there was some hidden messages in that about the monarchy. And although this is very respectful, I still think it has some tones of being disrespectful to the monarchy in the sense that, um, in the sense that it's, ah, I now remember, sorry, there's always something that I keep in my mind, I should have better notes. But I wondered if part of it was because this was installed in Ireland. It might be different if it's in Great Britain itself, whether it's in Ireland, which has a controversial relationship with Britain historically. 
So I wondered, maybe, that this was seen as a grandmotherly figure in a garden, as opposed to what we think of as Her Majesty. Um, that's kind of my takeaway from this. Now, I tried to look at more sculpture by the actual artist, and there's a picture of him that I, I put here. Um, what is his name? Ah, his name is Anto Brennan, A-N-T-O-B-R-E-N-N-A-N. -N -N. And it was really hard to find other images of his work. I did find a few, and this is very in keeping with his work. So the commission would have been made knowing what his work was. I find it weird and odd, not as a sculpture. Let me be clear, not as a sculpture. I think it works very well as a sculpture in the setting. It's just that it's in the context of art for the royals. And that's where I think there's a little bit of friction. And I wonder what you think too. So here's the actual sculpture. I really like the corkies. <laughs> But it's a very blocky, very stiff sculpture. And, you know, one thing about these commissions, when you think about it, is how many eyes had to look at this and approve of it before it got installed here? Because there's a Martin Luther King sculpture in Boston, and surely the schematic of it had to be looked at by hundreds of people before it was approved. And when it went out into the public, um, there was some controversy about it. Um, it's a beautiful sculpture, but if you look at it from certain angles, it it um, describes something that you wouldn't necessarily want to see in public. And it just makes me wonder about the process. So this is the, and there's the artist with the sculpture that was revealed in early September. Now here's a more conventional, what we think of as royal sculpture you know, with, with those robes and on the horse and all of that. Now this is seen from quite a distance. So I'm not saying that you have to have the queen be recognizable, but it's just interesting that every, this is so royal in terms of the robes and the crown and the throne, which is very different from the sculpture that was revealed in the, in the garden in early September makes me kind of wonder what she might have thought of it if she was still alive and saw it. Because surely Queen Elizabeth saw herself as this. And, you know, when we would see pictures of her at Balmoral in her um, inner tweeds with her corgis, she was dressed the way that garden sculpture is. And I'm not so sure that she thought of that as being her public role. You know, she really had a distinction between public and private which is definitely getting blurred as we get into more of a media age. So here's another one which would have been seen from far away, and it's, it's odd. The reason I say it's odd is it has absolutely no resemblance to her at all. Now, I don't know how big this particular sculpture is. And, you know, if you're seeing it from below her, it may look quite different. If you think about Michelangelo and the Sistine Chapel, you know, he had to consider the actual perspective that his audience was gonna look up and see those figures at. So he had to compensate for that with changing perspective because of the vaulted roof and how far away his audience was going to be. So with public sculptures like this, I would imagine that you have to think about that as well. This one, I think, uh, this, <laughs> here's another one. I'm thinking, all right, I recognize the hair, the crown, the robes, and all that. Um, who is this person? It's just, I guess what I have to reconcile for myself is that royal art is going to be uh, multitudinous, and if that's a word, and it's going to be um, varied. So this is a much more formal setting. This is maybe the side of a church, maybe, would be my guess. And we saw just a second ago, maybe a close up of it. It seems to be very hard for people to get a likeness of the queen in sculptural form, which is surprising to me because, gosh, if there's ever an image we've seen oh, for a very, very long time, it's the image of the queen. That one works pretty well. Maybe it's just very strange to have yourself, um, you know, so-called so dipped in bronze for all time, but they seem to get the corgis down really well. <laughs> so. Do with that what you will. I, do, I really, I'm not sure what to say about that. So the reason I'm making this video is, I sh you know, I'm not opening it up because I want lots of controversy because I don't. That's not what I'm about. 
But I'm curious from you all because we study portraiture, and and we are we um you know we've been watching the BBC and the the Portrait Artist of the Year, Landscape Artist of the Year programs for so long, and what you think of this particular sculpture, and maybe you can help me understand more about why this is a really valid piece. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.